Hey everyone, my name is Thomas Duffy, and today we're going to be talking about how to build a responsive layout using one property of the CSS grid called grid template areas. In this video, we'll be covering not only how to use grid template areas, but also the limitations of the property and what you can't do. Let's get started. So we're going to start off with this basic page markup that you'd typically see in a basic web page, header, sidebar, main content, and footer. I've added some color to the different sections to start off just so we can see how the elements are laid out in its current state. So let's dig in. All right, so I'm going to start off with giving the parent container that's wrapping all of the other sections a width of 100% and a height of 100 view height, or VH. And then I'm gonna give it a display grid. Next, we're gonna give the sections of our layout names, which will be used to define our grid layout in the parent container. To do this, we use the property grid area. You can name these whatever you want, but it's always good to be as descriptive as possible. Now that our sections have names, we can now define our layout using grid template areas. The syntax is a little strange, but actually really nice to read. You simply create the layout using the names we gave the sections earlier. So if you want a three column layout with five rows, you can simply define it like this. Now let's give it a refresh, and voila. You can now start to see the grid actually mimic what you defined in grid template areas. Now let's say you wanted to give the nav and header an explicit height. You can do this by coupling the use of grid template rows along with grid template areas. So something like this. So the way that this reads is we have 50 pixel header. One FR is basically a fraction unit, so it's just gonna take up the available space. So there, there's three one FRs, and so that represents the three rows in between the footer and the header. Uh, and then you'll see the footer has the 50 pixels. So let's give that a refresh. And now you can see the footer and header are 50 pixels high. All right, so now let's say we wanted to do the same thing for the sidebar. We wanted to give the sidebar an explicit width. The way we do that is by using the grid template columns, and it's identical to the grid template rows. So let's go ahead and just copy and paste that. And we have to match the number of columns um, just as we did with the number of rows. And now you see we have a 200 pixel width for our sidebar. So let's talk about some of the gotchas and what you can't do with grid template areas. So the first thing is, is you cannot repeat sections in the grid definition. So if we were to just copy and paste the header on to where the footer is, you'll see that it actually breaks. And this is because each section must be unique. So um, if we switch that back, you'll see it fix itself. The second gotcha is you must define your layout with a complete grid, meaning you can't leave any empty gaps in the section definitions. If you would like to leave a gap, you must do it with either three dots, or you can do it just with one dot as well. All right, so the third gotcha is you always have to define your sections respecting the box model of the div. So you can't make a section an L shape or something like this. It must remain a box or a rectangle. 
Now that we've gone over the gotchas, let's talk about how to make this layout responsive. So to make this responsive, we can simply just add a media query. So let's go ahead and do that. And now in the media query, we can just basically redefine the actual uh, grid layout for the mobile version. For the mobile version, we'll use the same amount of rows, but we'll only use one column. All right, so because we updated the mobile version to only reflect one column in the grid template areas uh, property, we need to actually update the grid template rows and the grid template columns to match the uh, new template layout that we defined for the mobile version. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video on grid template areas. Please leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for some more awesome web development tutorials. See you soon.